This is exercise number 13 in the Paint with Lens series of short lessons. And seeing it's number 13, we'll paint a spooky scene. Down here I have white, thalo blue, raw sienna and a bit of crimson. We need a very bright area here right in the middle, or I've got a bit of raw sienna there, it doesn't matter. The painting will be about from there to there. So fill in this little spot here with white paint. This is just the undercoat. That tint of raw sienna looks rather good. We'll leave that there. And the thallow blue in the top of the sky. And give it a little tint of crimson so it's not really blue. It's got a bit of dark in it. I'm squirting my board with a bit of water because I'm working in acrylics. My paint's drying very fast today. Bring your blue down, but don't destroy your white. Don't come down too far. Add a bit more crimson and a bit more raw sienna. And then clean your brush and add some white over the top of the bottom part of the sky and brush it up as if it's sunlight beaming up from below the horizon nice and bright. Now we need a pale grey so with the blue and the crimson and the raw sienna and some white mix them together. Keep your grey into the blue tones don't add too much crimson and not too much raw sienna. Don't mix your paint completely have all different coloured streaks. Now we'll block in a building. While you're doing this, keep an eye on your sunset in the distance and don't block it in over the good bits of sunlight. If you have a bit that's a little bit dark, you can put your building over that first and make it up as you go along. Don't copy mine exactly, but put something in that looks rather mysterious and don't worry about your tones changing tone. There's dark tones and light tones let the brush make up its mind what it's doing there. Now this is all blocks, it's all made out of masonry of some sort. So with your flat brush you can put in deliberate flat brush strokes in different directions and it will give you a hint of blocks stacked on top of each other. Put a step in, that's a horizontal step and another one. I'll fill that bit in. As you come forward force your brush on harder and the darker colours will come off. I'll clean my brush down there. Now just a little bit more detail. Step back and look at it. Put a few points at the top to make it look rather evil. There. And block them in to make them look like they've been built out of blocks. I'll fill in this edge down here because that's the edge of the painting. We don't need too much light in this area over here. And you can come in with a bit of dark blocks as we come forward as if that building is behind these dark blocks. So they need to be a deeper tone. And let's have some shapes come in here, rather weird shapes of maybe a tree. Add your colours as you come forward. Deliberately put your brush strokes on in blocks and fill in your spaces. You can run a bit of highlight on the top of each block just to show a bit of the sunlight shining on the block. Clean the brush down the bottom and fill it in and there we'll put a little bit of detail there with these brighter colours. Here I have warm red. Now this is a foreground colour. I'll mix it in with the blue. That'll give us a very dark colour. I haven't mixed my colours completely. You see there's all types of colours there. And let's block in some strange things here. Big heavy dark blocks. Do leave a few lights between them so you can see the shape of them. Make deliberate brush strokes and don't go back over your work. One brush stroke is enough often. Don't go brush brush brushing until your paint all fades together. Well, that's blocked it in. Fill in any little spots in the foreground that are too light because we do want it very dark there. Now the little hairbrush, the soft brush, we twiddle in some very dark branches. It doesn't matter what colour these are, just all your dark colours put together. And because this is a spooky scene, you can have jagged branches and the ends of the branches look like fingers. So keep your branches thin and jagged and hold your brush with two fingers. That will allow you to paint these very fine lines. While we're putting these branches on we must remember to attract the eye into the picture around in a circle. 
the eye goes up the branch and around and back into the picture again. So I'm bringing my branches back down into the picture and I'll keep making this fingered look on the end of the branches which looks rather spooky. And don't forget to have a few branches crossing each other. I'll bring in a little one from underneath here. You make yours up as you go along. Now a vine down here. That should make it look old. And put a few knots on the vine hanging into the picture. And a big branch here to bring your eye into the picture in case it disappears up the vine. Jagged branches again. Don't worry too much about them. Just put them on. You can repair them if they're very bad, but most of the time they're okay. Jagged. Now let's have a blackbird sitting on the branch in his beak. And another one there. That'll be a crow. And another one. And you can repair bits of your branches here by putting the birds on bits that don't look so good. Remember the bird in the distance is much smaller. I'll just fill in this bit here to stop your eye travelling up and off the picture in that area. It's too confusing now for your eye to look any further than the tree. Here also. And another bird in the middle. That will bring your eye down into the picture after looking at the birds at the top. I'll run a white line around a few of these higher points. That gives an idea of the sunlight bouncing off the top of the building. The main thing to remember with this painting is there's two sets of tones. There's the background tones and the foreground tones. The background tones are pale greys and the foreground tones are darks. We might add a little bit of red into the foreground here. I'll add a little bit on my little round brush there just to give you a different lot of tones in the foreground than the background. Don't put any red in the background. That warm red is always a foreground colour. Highlight a few of the rocks but don't overdo it. Then we can make a little path, make it look a little bit more mystic. Looks like someone has been there. A bit more highlights with lines sloping into the picture. I need to darken this area here. A bit of foliage will do here. Don't detail it. Just put it there so you look past it. You almost ignore it. But you do need it to give you the bright middle of the picture and the dark around the outside to attract the eye into the middle. Now maybe a few birds coming in from the distance. Coming into land. I fill in the bottom here with my palette. I use a palette on the bottom of the painting sometimes. And you see how rustic that is. Try to work to that standard. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. A spooky scene, number 13.